What's my name? It's Diddy. When is it a crime to be a freak? To be it's not. not. It's not. But, but, but the problem is he was drinking motherfuckers and they didn't know it fucking him in the ass. It's Diddy. If you invite a young lady to your house and you give her a drink that she has no idea that there are narcotics added to that drink, you are going to prison, buddy. It's Diddy. Cassie's the richest hoe I've ever seen because she willingly took that shit for all them years for the major payout. She got paid. It's Diddy. You want to get on? Go see Puffy. Bend over on the table, let him knock you off, and you can get your record deal. Welcome to another episode of Concrete Reality TV, where we strive to know more and do more with what we know. If you would like to know more and do more with Concrete Reality TV, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on the bottom of the screen. And to get it cracking, hey, what's up? I'm Ephraim Acapella. It's your boy, Cool Cutter. K. Hey, Fred in the house. And I'm OG. Give me my motherfucking theme music. This is a test. Concrete Reality. For the first time, we are hearing about victims who say they were minors when they were allegedly assaulted by the music star. The youngest allegedly just nine years old. The allegations were revealed today by attorneys representing more than 100 alleged victims who are preparing to sue. Welcome to another episode of Concrete Reality TV. Hey, I figured, you know, all of this stuff going on, I was trying to figure out what topic are we going to talk about. And I was like, well, it's about time. It's about time that we bring it back. Another episode of Concrete Reality TV, Court of Public Opinion. Last time we got together, we talked about Kales and the case of Sean Diddy Combs, guilty or not guilty. Oh, that nigga's guilty. He going to, he, he, look, he going to get more time than R. Kelly. Period. He's in trouble. <laughs> that boy, when, they, when the government hits you with the Rico, all they doing is filling in the blanks, God damn it. Cutter, guilty, not guilty. May I start this off with one word? Go ahead. Guilty. That nigga is guilty. <laughs> guilty. <laughs> K. Fred, guilty or not guilty? Uh-oh. Here we go. Here you go. K. Fred, this bullshit. I'll say this, man. I know. I told you he goes in books, and they thought you said I say this, man. They would say that the man is guilty, but I'm gonna say that that man is innocent. Damn. When is it a crime to be a freak? To be it's innocent? not. It's not. But, but, the, but the problem is he was drinking motherfuckers, and they didn't know it. Fucking him in the ass. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Allegedly, Allegedly. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Allegedly. Now, first off, my thing is this: Who came to the Diddy party? Hey, listen. Just because you, just because you go to the party, just because you go to the party, they went to the house, right? Hold on. We got a, we got a, we got a holiday coming up here real quick called Halloween. Now. All the little kids gonna dress up and they gonna go around the people's houses and knock on the door and open up their bag for some what? La candy. The key that you learned as a kid was when you go home, what you supposed to do? Check Examine the candy. candy. Right. <laughs> so just because you went to the house and you didn't check the candy, that's <laughs> that ain't any fault. That's his house. He's liable to put whatever he wants in his drink. Now, if you drink it, that's your fault. But you at his house, under his domain, and ain't nobody said that he can't be a little freaky. Ain't nobody said he can't have cameras in his home. You got cameras in your home. You tried it. You it, tried it. You, 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 you always had me. But this is where you fell off. What? This is where you fell off. If you invite a young lady to your house, and you give her a drink that she has no idea that there are narcotics Added to that drink, you are going to prison, buddy. Baby, yes, you are. Hold on. Uh -uh. Uh -uh. Let me tell you why. What's my name? It's Diddy. My name is Diddy. You know what I do. You know what Diddy. I do. When you came in our house. You better quit playing no, like you don't know me. Know. So now we're going to play stupid. You don't know who I am and what I do. 
I mean, I've been dun, doing dun, this dun, dun, if I'm if I'm mean? that young lady and we in court, I have no idea what you do. You told well, me oh. you was a record producer, not a drugger. <laughs> you didn't tell you was Bill. You didn't tell you was Bill Cosby's nephew. <laughs> you didn't tell me that you possess narcotics because the parents. What's my name? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. We know back in the day in the seventies and early eighties that Quaaludes was the go-to drug. We know everybody was taking that shit. But guess what? The courts saw different. Yeah. When them, when them older ladies came, they in their seventies now. He drugged me, but they don't. T- they ain't telling you that we all took Quaaludes back then. We all was snorting cocaine back then. They not telling you at that. Well, that's the they point. didn't say it was recreational. They didn't say that. It was recreational. But that's the point. Yeah. That's the point I'm trying to make. So here, here's here's what I'm getting at. I love the way I think in the fact of today we can just play ignorant. What do you mean? I mean, women do it all the time when you're in arguments. What? What? What are you talking about? I have no idea. Are you serious? And I mean, what? Now we done ran Karen all the way through our society, right? To where niggas is just Karen now. Hostile, but don't know shit. Come on, man. You knew good and well back in the day, even in today, whether you male or female, if you trying to get on and you trying to make millions of dollars and you trying to be some star, you know what goes on in the industry. Why do you think, let me tell you, Cassie's the richest hoe I've ever seen because she willingly took that shit for all them years for the major payout. What are you talking about? She got paid. So you you saying, well, he's trafficking, but you just paid a hoe for, for all her performance <laughs> over 10 years. She, she got paid to get her ass whooped. She got paid to be abused. And it, was, it wasn't bad then when she was taking the abuse, but now... Oh, she done went and got a white boy and now she's a victim. Bitch, you, what, are you crazy? Man, where is the accountability for the people who walk into this shit and you know what's going on? But at the end of the day, they want to sit back now and play victim. I got 125 victims. These are big names. What are you talking about? Hugh Hefner was known to throw parties with his Playboy bunnies. What do you think they were for? John F. Kennedy, all of them were there at the mansion. What? Getting served. This is a public service announcement. <laughs> I know who getting the heat this time. And I know it ain't me. Woo! Who they gonna burn your ass up? <laughs> hey man, I'm just saying because at some point there has to be an accountability on both sides. I agree. Man, I agree. I'm not saying that what yeah, he did was ultimately just, oh my God, you're so righteous and moral. What we're talking about is an industry. Where it's been said, even for males, you want to get on, go see Puffy. Bend over on the table, let him knock you off, and you can get your record deal. What are you talking about? And if you went in there and got knocked off as a male or a female, that's your fault. That's what you wanted to trade with. Rick Ross, uh, the game. I mean, what, LL Cool J? I mean, from what I understand, you can't be famous without being in one of them little pedophile rings. Will Smith. You know what I mean? We know what he did in his first movie. What was it about him getting bent over the table? Now this nigga's going to be Superman. What? <laughs> Come on, man. So so you can't play me like that. Woody, what's, what's, what's the old dude? Uh, Elvis Presley, pedophile. You know what I mean? Jay-Z was messing with Beyonce when she was a, a teenager. I mean, we ain't going to talk about how Aaliyah was ran through. You know what I mean? Get out of here, man. They've been doing this for years, white and black. But now we somehow got a moral conscience. My thing is, here's my question to you all. What is the media really diverting you from? Because as I'm watching over here, I'm watching Israel and and, and, and Iran go at it. We had World War III. What are you talking about? I'm watching Hurricane, Hurricane Helene run through all them sundown towns through the North Carolinas where they got loaded with lithium to make, what, cell phone batteries. And they buying up property. I'm looking at this bullshit-ass FEMA talking about, we'll give you seven fifty, but we're broke. Seven fifty. What? You just gave $30 billion to Ukraine and, and, and Israel, but you broke for American citizens? Man, let me tell you something. I don't give a fuck about Sean P. Diddy Combs when I just went and paid five dollars for some fucking blueberries. Excuse me, F. Edit that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got I, hey, Fred, you dropped a lot of meat on that bone. 
And we're going to dig in a little bit more. Let's go backwards a little bit. You know how I, I like to touch on the historical facts behind the case. So you already know I brought something up just so we can see what the hell, number one, you know, how do we get here? So let well, me We'll start at the beginning. We know Diddy got arrested on September 16th, 2024. Combs was arrested in Manhattan after a grand jury indictment. We are disappointed with the decision to pursue what we believe is an unjust prosecution of Mr. Combs by the U.S. Attorney's Office. He said mm. calling his client an imperfect person who is not a criminal. So... Mm. That's how we got to this point. They finally snatched him up, but we're going to back up some. So let's go back to, let's see how far this takes us. Hmm. He couldn't make it to Asia or Russell Simmons. He, 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 so he should have went to the Cassie case where hey. Kate Fred touched on. November 16, 2023, Cassie files her lawsuit. So Cassie began dating Combs around 2007, and the two were on and off until calling it quits for good in 2018. That's over oh. 10 years. You know the crazy thing about this? I bet you she, she called him and said, hey, just give me some money, and I won't file no lawsuit. He'd probably, he'd probably say, bitch, fuck you. And if he just would have paid in silence, he'd have been still raping people. I allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> But speeding up to what you just mentioned, November 17th, 2023, Cassie and Combs agreed to settle out of court. So less than 24 hours after the lawsuit was reported, Combs and Cassie reached a settlement for an undisclosed amount. Terms of this deal are still not known. She got about 23, 24 mil. Oh, she got her money up front. <laughs> well, they, I'm pretty sure they told her to get there. It was a process. You know, mm -hmm. we know women are are calculated, right? So it's not a surprise that she did what she did. Think of how this 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 was presented to the public. Yeah. She came forward with her story, her accusations. Did he deny it, right? Said that he was his character was being attacked. Did this whole internet spill on, on Instagram? The tape drops. Mm -hmm. The tape that just mysteriously first of all, the hotel don't even exist anymore. That tells you one thing. The hotel don't need to, it's torn down. The footage yeah. that he thought he bought obviously had another copy. Drops. Oh my God. So Cassie, what Cassie was saying was true. Not only was Cassie what Cassie was saying was true, all these other people who have been saying Diddy was a violent person, Diddy beats women, Jaguar Wright, Reggie White Jr., Gene Deal, all these people who have been saying for years. In these in these interviews that Diddy was a violent person. He used to beat on Kim. He used to beat on Cassie. He beat on Misa. He was a known violent person. So this was no, no secret. It just the, the tape that confirmed it. it. That's all it did. It confirmed it. Thank you. Because you just proved my point right there. It was known who he was as a person. It wasn't no guessing. Everybody knew he was beating and drugging. You know what I mean? So go check, choose to hang around that, especially if you're a female. What are you expecting not to happen to you? You somehow special in this? You're not going to get beaten and drugged by this nigga? What? I'm just not understanding. I'm going to hear, man, let me do this. I'm going to go make a choice to get abused by somebody just so that five to ten years later, I can go, oh, my God, they abused me. I'm going to sue them. Well, people do that at work. All the times they, I they mean, know, look, that's that's company for ten or twelve years. Oh, no, so you leave and then sue them. Now here's my point. <laughs> right so now, you calculate like that. Right. So put water on the floor. Now, if you put water on the floor and don't put the sign up saying "slip and fall," you know what I mean? Everybody gonna come and slip and fall. That's where he made his mistake. Now, I would yeah. say that because you know the conspiracy theorists. Let's talk on that. Now they say on one level. Well, you know, he, he sued Ciroc. They, they made him billions and whoop, whoop, whoop. Yeah, well, that was his fault, too. I mean, you, you bit the hand that feeds you. So if they opened up the door for everything to come in, then what do you expect? My thing is he's not going to dodge what's out there because either way, it's like R. Kelly. Whether he peed on the girl or not, you know what I mean? They gonna, he's done. You know what I mean? And it's, it just is what it is. It doesn't matter what we think. And I think for me, I don't give a damn because P. Diddy ain't paid none of my bills. 
Neither is Meek Mill. Meek always getting dragged into the back of the fight. <laughs> <laughs> Afterwards. <laughs> so on November 23rd, 2023, Combs accused of sexual assault and drugging in early 90s incident. <laughs> So a day before the New York State Adult Survivors Act expired, damn, Combs was hit with a pair of sexual assault lawsuits. So we got one was from an anonymous plaintiff who claimed the music mogul sexually assaulted and beat her, while the other was filed by a woman named Joy Dickerson Neal, who accused him of drugging and sexually assaulting her when she was a college student in 1991. Did he get the fuck out of here? Yes, they, they took it back. Dickerson Neal claimed that Diddy had footage of the assault and allegedly distributed to others around the music industry. Man, okay. See, why y'all playing dumb again? Y'all know in the 90s, it was a big thing. You had Heather Hunter. You had Superhead. They was doing videos. Snoop brought out his first porn movie back then along with Ice-T. Why are y'all playing like y'all don't know this? Like y'all don't know what the industry was back then. I know what the industry was. Oh, I know. I'm just. No, I'm just my point. Hold on. Let me. Let me. Let me. Give, let me make something Come on. real quick. In the court of public opinion, I'm going to say he's guilty because I know that nigga did that shit. Now, was he right or wrong? Hey, that ain't for me to say. I'm simply saying that if it was percentage wise. I'm pretty much 98.9% sure he did all that shit. I mean, even when, when we were in the industry, I was hearing stories about Diddy in the studio sessions. Was I near Diddy? No. Did I have sessions with Diddy? No. I had sessions with people close to him. And all of them said the same shit. Don't sign a bad boy. Or if you do, do some work with bad boy. Make sure your management, your lawyers are ma making sure you get paid. But that was with everybody back then because record companies was just getting niggas left and right. If they could, they're going to get you. Now, whether or not you go to Diddy's parties, after parties, we already knew what went down back then. You got new niggas with money. I'm sorry. You got new niggas with new money. Majority of these niggas are from the hood, never grew up with no silver spoon in their mouth. All of a sudden, they, they, they get access to millions and millions of dollars. You got women who are surrounded by them. They got access to drugs. They got access to alcohol. They got access to women. You're going to have some parties that are just ridiculous. They just learn in their way. These people have been doing this since the six, early 50s, 60s, and 70s. The rap community got hip to it because they got access to that shit. And when they got access to it, they did the same shit the white folks was doing. They got bored. They start buying islands, renting out islands. They start doing orgies. They pro buying prostitutes left and right. Alcohol, drugs, drugs, drugs. This is nothing new, but it's new to the American public. But if you've been in an entertainment industry or near the in or around the entertainment industry, you know that this shit has been going on for years. Diddy is just one of the other fall guys. Trust me, as they said, more are coming. If you think about history and look at it, it's always been like that in the United States. Uh, historical elements due to, of course, how we perceive blacks and whites are, you know, whites and non-whites, because it's always going to be white folks started off. And then when black folk join in, it becomes a problem. So white folks, it becomes, started off, it becomes a crime. It's a crime <laughs> after black folks start enjoying the fruits of white privilege. And that's just fact. We can go through and pick out a whole bunch of stuff. You know, that's an, that's another uh, episode. But it seems to be that way. White folk get a chance to do it. They benefit from it. And then all of a sudden, when it's time for black folks to start getting a piece of what white folks have already been experiencing, then it becomes a problem. And then they hit them with the Rico. Yep. <laughs> that's just my opinion about it. That's what I see with yep. this thing with Diddy. It's just a long legacy of incriminating black folks. So some of what you're saying is very true. Hugh Hefter threw these parties for years. He never got hit with the Rico. We not finna sit up here and act like people ain't freaks. The average uh, person, I ain't finna put my out there like that. <laughs> 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 the average individual has thrown house parties, freak, freak, what they call them, freak offs, freak offs, parties and and swinger events and stuff like that. The average person did that shit. So what you think you gonna do if you got millions and millions of dollars in the bank and you a freak? It's gonna, it's gonna turn all the way up to about twenty thousand temperatures more. But let me let me say this: if it's if it's wrong, 
for Diddy to drug you, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Do y'all follow, do y'all, do y'all I can't. Me I can't with K friends today. I came with you today. Do y'all follow me with this. If it's wrong for Diddy to drug you, then why is it not wrong for us to be drugged with the Food and Drug Administration? It's called the Food and Drug Administration, and they drugging you. Look at the back of your food. It's loaded with chemicals. You got some of the highest rates of cancer ever because we got nothing but Franken food in the store. They drugging you every day, and ain't nobody saying nothing about that. But y'all want to talk about P. Diddy. Uh, hey, Fred, yeah. you know, I thought about that because even earlier when you had mentioned something similar. And uh, the first thing that came to my mind was to remember you have freedom of choice. They're not making you go to the party. They're not yeah. making you take the drinks, but you're choosing willingly to do it. No matter if you feel like you've been unjustly influenced by the advertising, the music. marketing, the music. Take that. Take that, all of take these that, mediums of uh, communication, <laughs> you feel like that that's influencing the public to do these right. things. But nonetheless, right. in the end, when you choose, when you make the choice, the selection to Bingo. partake, then it that's, I mean, it's on you. So, well, and, and, I, and I think that's my point yeah. right there. Thank you, sir. First of all, we got it. Let's, is it, we're going back. Let's go ahead and go back. Who was the first known video vixen to, to play the victim? Superhead is a, is a moniker that I gave myself. Corinne Stephens, right? I was going to say Robin Giggins, but go ahead. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a good one. You got to include her mama in that shit. Well, yeah, her mama too. Diane Kara. Allegedly, during those uh, different world days, Debbie Allen and her husband were known to have freak offs. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. I heard the same thing too. Allegedly. Yeah. And, yeah. you know. And they had swinger parties where they called for swinger parties back then. But Norm Nixon, have, you mean Norm them? Norm, Norm Nixon, yeah. Norm them used to have freak offs. Um, and that's how Jada got turned out, mm-hmm. along mm-hmm. with others. But that's how I'm pretty sure she got introduced to that lifestyle. Well, it's hard out here for a pimp when you try to get the money for the ring. I mean, when you think about <laughs> if you do the math. When the math be mathing, as they mm-hmm. say, math. I'm, I'm just world, Hold on, a different world. Mary's will, but she's always said that she was not monogamous. In a mono- she was married to Will, but she wasn't monogamous. She said she didn't want to get married because she didn't believe in monogamy. Well, they were known to mm-hmm. have what recalls. How was mm-hmm. she introduced to that? <laughs> the story goes on and on. How did Will's baby mama and them become such a close unit? Who was Will? How did Will get brought into the game? Through Quincy Jones. Yeah. Allegedly, Quincy Jones is bisexual. This does not take away from his legacy. These are people that have been in the game for years. Hey, P- Professor Griff told you. Y'all just didn't listen. Come on now. Professor Griff told you. And they just didn't listen. To operate. In that club, you have to be initiated. For you to be initiated, you got to do some sh- that you probably cool with. But nine times out of ten, it's recorded. To keep you in your place, boy. It, 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 I'm t- just, just in case you want to grow some kahunas and you want to start running your mouth, somebody going to knock on your door. <laughs> Hey, how you doing? Just put this in your uh, your computer real quick. Let me show you something. <laughs> you brought it up because some people, let's say some of our viewers, don't know what the hell a freak off is. Just figured we'd just touch on that real quick. What is a Diddy freak off? A breakdown mm. of the shockingly lurid sexual assaults that involve drugs, sex, and baby oil. Sponsored by Johnson and Johnson. Just playing. Johnson and Johnson, huh? The question is freak off. So what were the freak offs? According to the indictments, freak offs Mm. saw Combs arrange, direct, elaborate, and produce sex performances, which he masturbated during, but also often electronically recorded. Freak offs occurred regularly, sometimes lasted multiple days, and often involved 
multiple commercial sex workers. A wild variety of controlled substances was distributed by Combs to victims during these freak offs, partly to keep the victims obedient and compliant. So they say victims were subjected to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse by Combs to cause the victims to engage in freak off for him to maintain control over his victims through, among other things, physical violence, promises of career opportunities, granting and threatening to withhold financial support, and by other <clears throat> coercive means, including tracking their whereabouts, dictating the victim's appearance, monitoring their medical records, controlling uh-huh. their housing, and supplying them with controlled substances. Uh-uh. That sounded like some pill no. shit. No. He's the boss, no. ringleader. No, stop twisting it. Go go back to the top, Ephraim. I, we we got to touch. You just can't run through this quickly like that. We got to we gotta touch on this gently. All right? Now, first off, let's talk about this. Mm-hmm. They included what type of workers? Commercial sex workers. So that means these people had a job to do. Ain't nothing wrong with that. They getting paid to do a job. Number two. Let's go to the next one. A wild variety of controlled substances. Who said that boy didn't have a prescription? <laughs> How they know? He <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm I just saying. Let's, say, and now let's go to the next one. Hold on. Go ahead. Victims were subjected to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse. What is a dominatrix? Mm. You ever had a dominatrix? <laughs> I, I, I have several homegirls who are. I'm just, I'm just saying. So that, and, and we've already established that they're commercial workers, and so they work in in the realm of they feel doing dominatrix. Let's keep going. Now, videos filmed of the alleged victims engaging in sexual acts. What do you mean? Ain't nobody ever bought a little cuckoo. You know what I'm saying? They buy, uh, that's a misdemeanor. That ain't no felony. That ain't no Rico. Come on, man. Let's keep going. During the separate from the freak off, let's see. They would have hit, kicked, threw objects, dragged victims at times by the hair, allegedly. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. We could have been role playing. Six. I'm just yeah, saying, we. Six. this is a freak off. We, You know what I mean? When did it become that, that I could go to jail for having sex? Or in entertaining my sexual fantasies. And then what's the other part? I get sued for sex? Then I don't want no coochie no more. I'm, I'm going abstinent. Hey, man, mm-hmm. if I wasn't sure, I, I would think that uh, Diddy's team should hire you. <laughs> they, they should hire you. <laughs> hey, man, I'm just saying, these are all suggestions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 if I'm Diddy, he's sitting over there next to I'm just something. I'm calling K Fred, goddammit. Hey, get him, K. Hey, Fred, look, all we need is 20%. That's all. They called him the future. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Well, that's why they call me K Fred. I mean, I just have a good way of looking outside the box because I'm not here to judge nobody. I mean, I'm just trying to say if this is what he was doing, and we know that they freak out. We know what the industry was like. We understand what the culture was from the 90s all the way up until now. And we know what white people been doing all these years, all the way down to the Playboy Mansion. Why is it that right now, and this is the question you have to ask yourself, this has all been going on for over 30 years plus, 50 years if you go back to little Michael J and Diana Ross. What are you talking about? That didn't look weird to you? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this has I been going right. on since it's, time. It's okay? the, it's the now, bully. my thing it's, is, ahead, why is it now a problem to be a freak? This I don't think it's Diana Ross and Michael Jackson. I, I don't <laughs> think it's a problem to be a freak. I don't think it's a, it's never been a problem to be a freak. Ever. But in this fraud at fraudulent ass society we live in, this is how they get to come at him. This is yep. how they get to come at Bill Cosby. Yep. This is how they did to get to come at R. Kelly. They doing the same shit. Yep. Just like he said in the beginning, when black folk do it, it's, it's a, a crime. Right. A now, crime. Watch it. now, here's the interesting part. Just what you said, Cutter, right there. When black men is what they're targeting, right? Right. They ain't came after no black women for hoeing, but they come after a black man because he was a hoe. Right. All right. This okay. is another form of castrating you, right? The same thing they used to do when they lynch you 
They'd hang you from the tree and cut your balls off. Why? Right? This is another way of them cutting that nigga's balls off. No more sex for you, buddy. They're going to be scared. He's going to be scared. Well, he's going to get it in prison, but he may like that. He go both ways. Well, Cardi B admitted publicly herself that she drugged and, and robbed men. Yeah, she did. She get indicted. Remember that. Why is she indicted? I mean, I'm just saying, man. Look, we know we know chicks. If you you know, what I'm saying, if you in the hood, you know girls that that set set cats up for the okey doke. You know what I mean? Yep. Get him over there, and then the, she bring in the boys to rob him. You know what I mean? For whatever goods he got. You know what I mean? Because you know, trick trick cats the trick. You know what I'm saying? They leave themselves wide open on that. You know, it goes back to my same question: Why now? Why now? To me, there's more of the stuff going on in the world that that should be spoken on other than somebody said it's a patsy. It's like you said, it's a public patsy. It's a distraction. It's a piece of composition by which everyone can start drawing profit from. That's the whole point. So this Diddy opportunity, everyone can eat off of for a while. I mean, we're going all the way up into the courts. The, the actual case, the conviction, it's going to be a while. So we can eat off this for a while. I think it's about profit. And that's what you profit from when you have opportunities like this. Everyone can eat. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So therefore, he's being set out there as the mule because they all doing it. And, and then here's what they're going to do. They're not just bringing down a black man. You have to understand for me, this is a part of what society defines as black culture. Right. So when you start popping out other big black names, you know what I'm saying? And then they made it a point to tell you that, what, 62 percent of, of the victims are black. Right. Mm-hmm. They're, 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 they're showing you something right there that you niggas yeah. ain't trusted. You said we got a function. You got a black function. <laughs> oh, man. Exactly. Yeah. We can't give you black people nothing. Look what y'all do when we <laughs> get millions of dollars. You start acting yeah. like Romans. And I forgot and you, you, the other one. you forgot the other one, K. Okay, Fred. But however, we can protect you from the right. police. We, mm-hmm. you know who that we is, that group. And you just insert whichever institution that you want. We, whoever that is, can protect you from those people that we are going to go after because they're hurting yeah. you. I got a question. So. Because I think, you know, it somehow ties if we can get the answer. But who ultimately runs the music industry? The Jukes. You already know the answer to that. I'm, I'm just, I have to ask you because we own Concrete yeah. Reality TV. Let's go and put it out there. Thanks to your boy Kanye. He advertised it pretty harsh, but we know the Jews. Okay, and- now watch this. The Jewishes. The, yes, okay. you <laughs> All right. So if we can ultimately say that they're the ones that, you know, running it now and then what's going on in the Middle East right now? They they bombing people. <laughs> now, and, and who's getting paid to do it? Same Jewish people. Now, let's, go, Jewish let's people. go to your government and let's say how many people within how many senators and congressmen that are in our government have dual citizenship to Israel? Hmm. Anyway, mm. another question. Um, <laughs> Who runs Hollywood and the music, or not just the music industry, but also the movie industry? The Jews. The same people. Oh, okay. I mean, I'm just saying, like, it, it, I got an issue with it. Hmm. Because I'm not dumb. Yeah. You can see it. You see what yeah. I'm saying? So I'm going to distract you as a public, because what we're doing in our foreign affairs, we don't need you dumbass Americans to really get it. We need to keep you all on you know, reality TV and Real Housewives, mm-hmm. because that's where the, the the almost the intelligence factor of America sits. It doesn't uh, sit in affairs and economics. Now, you want to go in with questions with K. Fred to talk about the the economic implications of what's going on? I don't give a damn about Diddy. Like we said earlier, I'm paying too damn much. And then here in a minute, um, they cutting off another pipeline. So you're about to see your gas prices go up. But keep my gas price is already high as hell. What you talking about? Oh, they going up again. That's my point. They just did this the other day. They always yeah. said, "Gay Fred, the power of the pen 
is always mightier than the soul. And the soul. Why is that? Because you have a group of people that have specialized for a long time in controlling the depiction of reality. So we can talk about reality, and this goes in a little bit of philosophy, but we can talk about reality. But once you put that into words, he who controls the actual authorship of those words is going to control the understanding of that which we are describing. That's the whole point of this. They learned that. That's what you talked about media. We talked about movies. We talked about music. We talked about just general news. All of this stuff is controlled by one particular group of people as the majority. The Juice. And they understand that if I can control this network of communication, then I can control how the public will understand what takes place in the world. Because you can't be everywhere at the same time all the time. So you're going to have to trust somebody's word about what's going on. As soon as you take my word for it, now I control what you understand about reality. And they know that. They got all the networks. So therefore, I can depict you, 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 anyone I want to, how I want to have you depicted. I can describe what goes on in another place. I can portray, uh, use a movie to portray different scenarios. Anything uh-huh. that people want to understand things by, I control the depiction of it because I control the media. He who controls the pen is mightier than the sword because you can fight me all day, but after you beat me, I'm on right that I won. Exactly, my friend. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I say Diddy is dumb for fighting. I be telling on every goddamn body. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> like, oh, it's coming. I be telling though from what his team says is that he proceeds pre- prepared to fight this to the end. I don't think that's going to happen, but we'll see. Exciting, entertaining. But is it the top of, at the top of my list of things to uh, concern myself with? No. Sort of like the election, but that's a whole nother thing. Mm, <laughs> like, yeah, that's a whole nother subject. I'm more concerned with what k Fred was talking about earlier, too, because uh, I drive through these these sundown towns, and they all fucked up. Every last one of them couldn't even get no gas. Luckily, I was fueled up when I was driving through because everybody's down. Yeah, that's a whole nother subject, man. We <laughs> we gonna get into we ain't gonna get into that. But that big seven fifty, I was laughing at myself. That seven fifty. Hey, man, come on. Uh, so I, I think at the end of the day, it's it's an attack on culture. You know what I mean? Because I think we talked about that in one of our episodes. You know how do how do and what do we define as black culture, right? And from a social standpoint, the imagery that's given has always been surrounded by what you niggas been doing best, shucking and jiving, movie and entertainment, you know. And when you take it back to Rome, right, Rome had the the gladiator games, right, which, you know, we now call football and sports. Right. But then over the years, we've we've also had the entertainment where you bring out the jester in Rome. Right. And he entertains and makes jokes. And we have comedians. You know, we understand that we're in a new modern day Rome. Okay. And so they give you plenty of things to entertain you, to keep you in entertainment. And that's what they did to the people in Rome, right? They kept them entertained with all the little orgies. And remember, in Rome, every picture in Rome that you see, especially when you go to Europe, you see the man standing there with the little boy. There's a reason for that because they were always pedophiles in Rome. I mean, so this is the new Rome that we're in, the new Babylon, right? And at the end of the the day, it's going to be what it is. Now, I don't claim to be religious, but I do know this little this little verse in Revelations that talked about them ones that claim to be Jews who are not Jews, but they are part of the synagogue of Satan. Now, I don't know who they're talking about, but when I'm on the news and I'm going, man. Y'all killing all these little poor, innocent children over in Palestine. Y'all bombing buildings. Like, y'all at war with people, and then you're masking it under, well, we don't know who the enemy is, so we just going to kill everybody. And then there's weapons, ma- weapons oh, of mass destruction. <laughs> this gets better. So at the same time they drop in Diddy, who met up in New York? The United Nations and the World Health Organization that basically just took away your sovereignty over the past couple weeks. So anytime they drop another COVID, they talking about biometric chips that everybody needs to be installed with. Man, do y'all understand what just happened? And then then nobody objected to it. They agreed it and passed it. So they holler and diddy while they taking away your rights on the back end. 
It's fascinating. And you, yeah. and you know who owns all of it, why they're keeping you distracted, why they selling off America behind your back. The crazy thing with this is if we go back to remember, I said the power of the pen is the mightier pen. than the sword. So remember, w- what we keep doing is adding layers and layers of imagery, illustration, stories describing shit in your head so you don't know what to believe because k fred just gave you a whole bunch of facts that were what put into linguistic form words for us to understand and then we take that and try to decipher what's true what's not true based off of the statement then i slap another layer on top and now we got the diddy thing going on and then we got this thing and this event being described and you go back to rome you got to ask the question this is a good one we got a depiction of rome but Nobody's ever actually experienced Rome, but we got the stories of Rome. But we have understandings about this place that no one has ever experienced directly outside of these depictions that people have given. So you in this cycle of here is a situation. Is it descriptive or prescriptive? Meaning prescriptive, I have a, some sort of truth that we're drawing from. And then we got some sort of uh, description where we're actually there. Somebody's actually there, hands on. I'm telling you what's happening. But they're both the same thing. One per a person is telling you what's happening. So you can't get past the person telling you what's happening. As long as you listen to me talking, I can put shit in your head. You're never going to get away from it. So how can you get away from this goddamn cycle of I say you believe that's what it is? That's exactly what we're talking about. That's exactly the same thing they even do. And what we're talking about right now, our topic for the day, the Diddy case. I wasn't there during the freak off. You wasn't there during the freak off. Right. It's the same ideology. They keep unlayering different layers of it, of speculation, of allegedly this. And then you've got other facts built in. But nobody was there. Nobody knows. It's all subjective. It's all based on the person who's writing that script at that time. That's Griber. Yeah. And and so watching watching the videos. Allegedly. Right. Allegedly. (laughs) So. That's the point. And I love that you said that because I think that's the bigger spectrum and how the question you made, how as a culture, as a society, do we differentiate between that? Because we don't write the script. The only script that you can write is the one that you have today for yourself and your family. Right. What you choose to do. Now, you're going to turn on the news, you're going to watch on the Internet or social media, and you're going to be bombarded with all of these different views and things that are in your head going, well, what's the truth? What's the truth? Because it's all subjective. Yeah, you see, is so I, and that's why I say I love what Ephraim said, because that, that's how the, our whole social makeup is built. You see what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's your truth is only defined by you what you believe. But then it goes to people's morals compass too. So their moral compass is defined by them too as well and what they believe and how they walk their life and how they live their life because what you do in your private home should never become public. Thank you. Which is why I say that man is innocent because oh, ain't nothing wrong with a little baby oil. <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with some baby oil, baby. I knew he was going to say that. I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> I don't think it's the baby oil. I think it's it may what it is the baby oil. What you mean? Don't you got loot? Nah, I'm saying I um I I'm not sure if I introduced um no, that was E I called. When I told you to uh, watch that movie Blink Twice. Yes, I watched that. That was you good. You watched it. It was yes. good, huh? Check out that movie, y'all. Check out that movie, man. <laughs> it's out. Blink twice. <laughs> Trust me. What is, what, what is on? What is on? Um, Netflix? Mm, Hulu? Not sure. I had to check, but because we, we got an app called Apollo Group TV dropping. Yeah. The, 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 and, you know, your little brand, um, Apollo Group TV, but basically it's on there. So good. Son of a gun would work for me. Dirt. <laughs> not <sure. laughs> <laughs> it's in the theater, but we got an app that ran to. But it, it, it's 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 definitely worth to watch. I'd say that. <clears throat> so we so we moving on forward to <clears throat> I guess our conclusion on this thing. We touched on different aspects of it. I think we've pulled off a lot of meat from the bone, and yes. I think we look forward to figuring out as far as on this 
entertainment side of things with the Diddy case, where it's going to end up. I think we pretty much can assume on my part, I'll give you my opinion because I didn't give you mine. I don't think he is guilty of everything they are throwing against him, his uh, character, but he ain't innocent of, you know, a lot of shit that is, you know, being thrown his way. So now it's so convoluted with shit. I think it really don't matter what they get him on because with Rico, Rico, if you ever look it up, they're making him the kingpin of a organized crime uh, syndicate. So Bad boy syndicate. Even though that's not what it officially was, you know, regarding his his titles, his positions in, in business, they're going to make it such as to try to convict him. So all of the people that he signed, they are potential witnesses and victims to his his uh, criminality. And then his the reign of that, terror. Yes, reign of terror. <laughs> Even though they willingly signed these contracts <laughs> and came to the parties and, you know, went out on dates with them and with his significant others and his sex partners, both male and female, it doesn't matter. Diddy, the, he's guilty because at the bottom of this Rico charge, it says guilty and they just fill in the blanks yep. and along the way. That's what Rico charges are. If you ever look it up real quick, I'm going to show you this just so you'll know. Hey, Ephraim's just talking shit. Concrete Reality, all no. the co-hosts on there, they just talking shit. No, we're not just talking shit. We're giving you some tidbits of facts and you can begin to do your own research and draw conclusions from. But what this is... Basically, the legislation itself was passed in 1970. The Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organization, a.k.a. RICO, Act aimed to take down organized crime organizations. Prior to the enactment of the RICO Act, prosecutors only had the ability to individually try crime that was mob related. A different mob member would be prosecuted for a particular crime, but prosecutors could not take down the whole criminal organization at once. The RICO Act gave prosecutors the ability to do this. However, now prosecutors do not just use RICO in mob prosecutions, but have also utilized the law to prosecute everything from street gangs to politicians. Now, check this out. This is the part that I was looking at. For RICO purposes, these are considered predicate offenses. So you're basically they the, <laughs> they're going to treat you like you're the subject in the statement, and then they're going yeah. to create these ideas based off of these descriptions yep. that they attribute to Ooh. you as the symbol in the fucking sentence. So that's what yep. they're doing with people. By no means, we're not saying that the people that are being alleged to have committed these crimes are innocent. We're saying that the shit that they're being tried for has not legitimately been proven. It's still in the court case, but at the same time, we're treating them as if they're guilty. These predicate don't you like they did it. Like yes, they like did they it. Actually did it. Mm -hmm, These predicate mm -hmm. offenses must also have been committed in connection with an enterprise. An enterprise may be a legal or an illegal one. It could be a corporate corporation. Sorry, it could mm. be a corporation or a mob. The enterprise must be a discrete entity, meaning it has to be a business entity. So here we go. Bad boy go, well, I mean, right there, they gave you two key words. They told you corporation and then they told you entity. Now, if you go back to corporation, you can go all the way back to the straw man on that one. So they <sighs> gonna, they get him either way as the straw man or they going to get him at bad boys. You see what I mean? The other part that I think that nobody really thinks about or ask this question if he gets indicted, right, and he goes to jail, what happens to his money? Mm, they're going to take it. They're trying to take it. They're trying to take all of it. They say that he uh, accumulated all these properties through his criminal activity. That's what they say. Bingo. Yep. So are they Bingo. coming after him or are they coming after the money? They're coming after the money. They're coming after the money. They're coming after the money. They're coming after the They're coming after the money. 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 They're not have the fund the same thing they did to murder inc they 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 basically defunded them in order to yeah. prosecute them took they their, to break took their, their guns away yeah took they, their guns away, took their guns away yeah. so you can't fight mm -hmm. you can't fight me exactly. yep so it's a win win yep. for the it's a win win for the system at the end of the day you know he got they were saying his his assets are 
probably over a billion dollars, and they said they're gonna take all of it if, if he convicted. So what you're saying? All this, everything. That's deep how y'all just explained that, K. Fred. Now I'm starting to see that this Rico, uh, this Rico Act allows the prosecutors, like it mentioned, you don't have to just be a crime mob gangsters because gangsters <laughs> usually they use physical force, but mm-hmm. corporations. Mm-hmm. Don't use physical force. They use financial influence. So we are taking mm-hmm. for the gangsters. We're going to take your guns. And then for the corporations, we're going to take your take finances, money. your money. Finances. But it's the yep. same, same now, concept. Now watch the same concept. If, if they take his finances and, and then they take the rights. So where do the rights for all the music, for all the this, for all the that, where does that go? Because it, it just doesn't stay in his hands. To the government, they're going to auction it off to the highest bidder. Damn. And they're going to get paid for it. So wait a minute. This is a cold game. And this is where I tell you, man, like, I don't give a damn what they say. I follow the money. Because the money don't lie. Everything is surrounded by money. You know what I mean? So whatever truth they try to paint, there's always money right behind it. And so if he gets indicted, that's quite a bit that they stand the game. And remember, he got he got a case in New York already. They go so I'm going to tell, tell you something funny. His son got a case too. Dang. So we try to get rid of anybody that could take the now, money besides him. Now, oh, wait a minute. Now this gets deeper because you just heard when we first started, we'll bring it full circle. When you played the thing earlier, the one thing that that, that attorney from Houston, H-Town, you know, H-Town. shout out to H-Town, what you already know, he said, there's other high-profile names. Now, when they bring out these whole, these high-profile names, I want y'all to not look at the person, but look at how much money they got. Mm-hmm. Because when it starts coming, they dropping a dime on everybody with paper. And I guarantee you, it's going to go all the way up the black ladder. And I don't even think Oprah's exempt from it at this point. Nah. Because we're talking about cash, not color. Hey, I'm going to tell you something funny. Russell Simmons did the best thing. Oh, he, he smelled this. He got, he got a body. <laughs> mm-hmm. He oh, smelled this shit coming. He, he smelled this shit coming from a mile mm-hmm. away. I think he said, yeah, I'm retired. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah. Y'all get this. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, who created hip-hop? Russell Simmons got there. Russell had to get I the mean, fuck on. Russell, so, what the fuck was going on? Hey, so he got word way, he got word two years before when they started the investigation, baby, he got word and went to Bali like, hey, I'm over here meditating, eating vegan and an organic peace and love to everybody. He with somebody that ain't got no uh, expedition treaty. They ain't got a, he ain't got a credit. <laughs> to Bali, right. So he chilling for the rest of his life with his paper. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. So at, at the end, and please know, who was the white boy next to him? Epstein. Epstein. And, um, um, now, oh, Epstein. Now, uh, Rick Rubin. Oh, Rick uh, Rubin. Oh, Rick Rubin. Now, Ru- Rubin is what? How old is yeah, Ruben, Ruben I mean, no, but I'm Ruben saying Rick, Rick Rubin. Scored it somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. So, so Rubin tends to be what is? I don't know. I mean, he white guy. Yeah, Ruben Ruben off the face of that. He'll be messing around. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So this this is my whole point, man. Like I said, when these names come out, it's gonna be all these celebrities that that have money. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, they're 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 taking down your black culture. No new niggas over there. (laughs) Man, that's deep. Mm. They've been aiming at hip hop for for. Oh man, a minute since NWA. What do you yeah. mean? You yeah. niggas with an attitude. Yeah. It goes along with what, what uh, he was just talking about. How you go, they're gonna come and take whatever because they see it, it. It definitely affects the masses. It has an influence on the masses. So we gotta have control of this shit. Yeah, and we got we got to make y'all docile. You motherfuckers <laughs> getting too goddamn crazy right now. It's always gonna be he who controls your depiction. That means your persona then Mm -hmm. they control you. I don't need you no more. Once I got your persona, I control the the depiction of you. I can promote it and advertise it, even though you might still be here. But I don't need you We're going to treat you like you dead. 
Yes, that's what, you know, the recordings, the videos, all of that stuff. Those are compositions that people actually own. There are shares that are uh, people that people own in those compositions. Those are pies. Those are actual entities that people eat off well, of. So that's what you said. Who, who owns that? Once you go to jail, R. Kelly, who owns your compositions, your persona? Is, do we still see R. Kelly around, even though R. Kelly, the actual physical person, the entity, is in jail, we still have R. Kelly existing independent of himself. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. So, you know, when you leave here, your pres- this shit is a depiction of us. So, once we leave here, who gonna control this shit? Who gonna control your legacy? I just want you to know, when I die, I'm still the greatest. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we gotta just overwrite that. We just we, we gonna create a whole new narrative, as we talked about earlier. Create a whole new narrative to say, "Hey, now you are not great. You were this. You were that. You were this. All of the See, negative." I'm about, it's always gotta be one hate. hater in the group. <laughs> Man, Otis, like, they ain't coming to see you, Otis. <laughs> <laughs> why, you, why you travel so much again? Mm. Hey, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, hey, man. hey, man. This is <laughs> hey, this is we're not gonna talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> we're, oh. Hey, we're closing it out. We, you know, be sure to, you know, check out the rest of this. We're going to probably touch on it again as more facts come up about this case. But be sure to check out Concrete Reality TV. We got plenty of more episodes that's in our library. Man, go hit on the like and subscribe, share. And then if you want to get alerted about new episodes that we come out with, you got to hit that alert. So we can uh, send out that notification to you when we come out with new content. So as always, we out. Peace. 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 Peace.